In the next example, we're going to see uh, what a strong statement it is to say that a function is a continuous function. Here's how the example goes. We'll take a function f from the open interval a, b into r. And by the way, this statement would also hold true if it were a closed interval, and it would also hold if it were the entire real line. Okay, so f is continuous on this interval. Now, if f of r is equal to zero for every single r in the rational numbers, then that means the function is equal to zero in this entire interval for even the irrational numbers, and that's what we're gonna to have to prove. So if f of r is zero for all the rationals, then we will prove that f of x is equal to zero for all x's in the entire real line. Okay, so all that it remains to see, or that we need to show, is that f of x is gonna be zero for the irrational numbers, since we know it's true for the rationals. So I'll start off the proof by just saying, we will show, or it remains only to show, that f of x is equal to zero for all x in the irrational numbers, which I write as the reals minus the rationals. In order to show that for all of these irrational numbers, we can just choose an arbitrary one and show it's true for that. And the fact that we chose it arbitrarily means it would be true for all of the irrationals. <clears throat> so, let z be an irrational number. Oh, I just noticed there's a typo up here. This should be the statement of the theorem. We're only dealing on the domain a to b, so that's all we need to prove this for. So let z be an irrational number and it needs to be in here, so maybe I will say there. Looks rather confusing, but all that is saying is let z be an irrational number in this interval. Okay, I hate to repeat myself, but what we're going to do is show that f of z is equal to zero. So maybe I'll make a note. To complete the proof, we will show that f of z is equal to zero. And I think a nice easy way to prove this would be by contradiction. Let's just suppose that f of z is not equal to zero. So to the contrary, for the sake of reaching a contradiction, in a minute. Suppose that f of z is not equal to zero. Okay, so what we have is uh, the function f from a to b, if we're plotting it, it's zero for all of the rational numbers. We've got some z here in the middle that's an irrational where f of z is, oh, I, drew, I drew it above the x-axis, it could easily be down below the x-axis, I'm just gonna choose this one for simplicity. So that height is f of z. Well, I'm going to let epsilon be half of that height. Let me just put f of z over two. I had needed the absolute values because it's possible that f of z is a negative number, so therefore we know that epsilon is bigger than zero. So what I'm going to continue to do is, since epsilon is half of the height, this would be my epsilon tube. Where we'll reach the contradiction is f is continuous. That means that for every epsilon, including this one, there exists a delta 
and I'll represent delta here by this being z plus delta and this being z minus delta. There exists a delta, a small positive number, such that for all of the x's that are within delta of z, which means they're in this interval, f of the x, for every one of these, if there's an x in here, f of x, the height, minus the height f of z, is less than epsilon, which puts it in this little box right here. But that's a contradiction because there are an infinite number uh, of irrash of sorry of rational numbers in this interval, where f of x would give us a zero. It's not in this tube here, so that's how we're going to reach the contradiction. Okay, so we let epsilon equal half of that distance. Okay, since f is continuous, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that, maybe I'll come down to the next line, for every x that's close to z, in other words, x, the distance from x to z being less than delta, implies f of x minus f of z is less than epsilon. <clears throat> That's a true statement, just basically reciting the definition of continuous function at a point. Let's choose an x in the interval, in the interval z minus delta, to z plus delta, that is a rational number. So maybe I shouldn't have drawn that out. All we've done here is we're picking a rational number in this interval from z plus or minus z plus or minus delta. So f of x is going to equal zero because it's rational. <clears throat> All right. Thus, um, since, since this is true, and because f is continuous, we get f of x minus z. Well, it has to be uh, less than epsilon, but we actually know what this is. f of x is f of a rational, which is 0. Um, minus f of z, which is definitely not zero, that's greater than, actually it's equal to f of z, which is greater than f of z over two in absolute values, which is our epsilon. So that's where we reach our contradiction. It's a continuous, we, we assumed it was a continuous function, um, yet, we found a we found an x in the interval between z plus and minus delta that was not close to f of z. That height f of z. So hopefully that is clear. That's our contradiction. And the contra it's a contradiction because f is continuous. x was close to z, yet f of x minus f of z was not less than epsilon. It was greater than epsilon. <clears throat> now, before I, I don't think I'm going to write down this alternate proof, but we could have used sequences. We could have noted that if that z is an irrational number, it's irrational. We know from back in, what, chapter one, when we were talking about sequences, every number on the real line, doesn't matter if it's rational or irrational, there is a rash, there's a sequence of rational numbers whose limit is that number. So even radical two, there is a sequence of rational numbers whose limit is radical two. I think we proved that back in chapter uh, one, I think, one or two. 
So we could have said, let x in be a sequence. Uh, let me write this first. Let it be a sequence in AB intersected with the rationals. So all that's saying is let x in be a sequence in here that can, uh, a sequence of rational numbers that converges to z. Since f is continuous, f of x in converges to f of z. But since all of the x ins are rational numbers, that's just zero, the sequence of zeros converging to, I guess, uh, that's right, I don't need the absolute values there, to f of z. That's a contradiction if f of z is not equal to zero. So it may be even easier to see this just by using sequences. So two different approaches to prove that if f, if f of r is equal to zero for all the rationals and f is continuous, that means f of x is always zero for the rationals and irrationals or all of the reals.